It's quite incredible how we humans can think creatively and make up imaginary worlds in our heads. We create art and it makes us reflect on life, makes us feel alive. But what happens when this becomes your daily job? I'm a Norwegian filmmaker and as a person who has to think creatively and come up with original ideas all the time, I've seen that this can be a struggle. I've seen friends getting depressed on the pressure of creating. So I gathered some filmmaking friends and a doctor to talk about this. And it felt good. Almost therapeutic to simply talk about this. Just said my worst nightmare. Yeah, I, yeah I'm like, oh no, don't say that. But what is your real year goal? That's why I wanted to share our conversation with you. And what the doctor said was quite interesting. Maybe creative work attracts people that are more vulnerable. So with me today, we have uh, Vasim, Dr. Vasim. We have Matthias, your freelancer, yep. uh, cinematographer and editor. And we have Fredis, director. Welcome. Today's topic is uh, mental health and connected to filmmaking and creative jobs and social media and uh, all that stuff. And I've been working with films for many years now. And what I've seen or what I experienced is that coming up with content all the time, being creative, because that's something you need to do when you work with filmmaking and photography and everything that's like in the creative uh, jobs, you need to come up with content and often sometimes in a, in a hurry because the client, you know, doesn't have that much of a budget, you need to deliver really fast. Mm -hmm. And to come up with something original or that you feel passionate about really quick can be hard. And uh, so I can truly see a struggle with that. Well, there's certainly a link between mental health problems and uh, creative work. I mean, we've seen this throughout history. We've had many artists who have uh, struggled with their mental health, Winston van Gogh being one of them. Our own Edward Munch here in Norway was open about his mental problems. And, uh, and there, are all, there has also been uh, several studies showing a link between uh, mental health problems and creative work. Now, so there is an association, but what the causes are is less clear. I mean, what is causing the, uh, the mental health issues? Uh, is it the creative work? Is it the stress that you just described? Or is it something about creative work that attracts people that may be vulnerable to start with? Uh, so those are the question, questions which like I, I as a doctor or the scientific community is trying to, to understand better. Because for me, you know, filmmaking is, is my life. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, I think I've been, I've been quite lucky because I had the opportunity to, to start a company with friends and, and like be together with other people when making films. Uh, the YouTube channel, which was really fun, especially at the beginning when it was like really casual. Now it's a bit more strict because you need, you need to deliver now, you feel, because there's a lot more subscribers and often you have sponsors. But uh, I think I've been, I've been really lucky. But I know people, uh, filmmakers, who have struggled. And, and especially, I think, nowadays with the social media and YouTube. Because, yes, YouTube is great because you can share everything there. And, like, it's free and you can show your content to everyone, which is great. But that also has some disadvantages, I believe. Yeah, I mean, we've seen uh, over the past couple of years a lot of YouTubers uh, have come out, you know, being open about their mental uh, issues. Uh, and especially vloggers uh, because as you said being a creator a content creator there's a constant stress that you have to make something you have to come up with new ideas what topic am I going to talk about today what kind of video am I going to shoot today mm -hmm. but if you're a vlogger you are your content so because you are broadcasting yourself mm -hmm. to your uh, audience and I think that can be even more stressful because then you have to come up with new ways to portray yourself, you know, show off all the fun things you're doing for your blogs. And I think that can also have a real stressful effect on your mental health. I know yeah. it, it sh the focus is kind of shifted to the wrong direction, if you ask me. Like, mm -hmm. it's all about what you create and how you as creative need or have a way of like expressing yourself mm -hmm. and your thoughts. And it shouldn't be all about like how many views you have and how many comments you have because that's just like the wrong focus. But at the same time, sometimes 
you have to think about that because there's a commercial side of it. I know. Where, where you need like income and you need to make a living out of it. Yeah. And I don't think that's possible if you only do, or very few people can only make content that I know, they want but, to produce and But at the same time, if, if I'm a director, right, mm. it's like what I actually create that's important, not me as a person. I know it's not that simple, mm. but in a perfect world, I would yeah. want to see more of like focus towards what we actually do make, like mm. we actually create something from scratch. It's interesting because you actually started a YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> You're a doctor. You know, people are interested in, in health. And and um, do you feel anything like now when you upload videos? That's because you upload quite quite often. Yes, I do. I mean, and I certainly feel the stress because I constantly have to think about new topics. You know, find out what are people interested in because when I put a lot of effort in in making a video, of course, I want people to see it. So. You're always monitoring the views. I mean, are you getting the views? Are you getting the likes? Mm. Uh, so, uh, so even I constantly have to feel that kind of anxiety and stress to make new videos. But I also enjoy doing it. Mm. So it's kind of a love-hate relationship yeah. for me. Yeah. And I think it's like that for a lot of uh, content creators. You know, my content is is scientific, but I can only imagine if my content was myself. If I had to constantly come up with new ways of showing off myself, that would be even more stressful. Yeah. So do you feel like you're making your content for you or for the people watching? I think it's a mix. Yeah. Uh, most of the time I feel that I have to make something that people are interested in because I want it to be viewed. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I get more I feel more rewarded when I make something that I'm happy with. Yeah. Something, you know, something that I feel that I've been artistic about. Yeah. And then so it probably the views doesn't matter that much. Quite often the views don't come in when I make something I'm happy with. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah that's so typical. The competition now is so big. There's so many people who want to become filmmakers and people can do it for almost nothing. It's been talked about this in Norway, having like you shouldn't pay, like have a too low um, pay rates because then you will destroy the film market. Like they're just like, oh you're doing you're making films for fun, right? It's not mm -hmm. actually your profession. You're like, ah, oh, but this is actually what I do. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't ask a painter to come and like paint your house and be like, yeah, you like painting, so you can do it for free. Mm -hmm. You know? You would do that with filmmakers. And that's why we work our asses off just to be like, I don't know, seen to be um, maybe next time we do a job, we can get paid, you know? Uh, you know, we all have this concept about the, um, uh, you know, the tortured artist or the starving artist who has, who sacrifices everything for the art, you know, sacrifices her uh, well-being or um, his economy and you know is just there for for the art we have that kind of a concept about the artist and when they start believing that I think it just leads them further down that road so they become you know they they care even less about their well-being and about their mental health and about their uh, emotions uh, and that can that too can have a very deteriorating effect on their mental health we probably have to like stop glorifying the struggling artists as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, because there's so many films about like, oh, I'm a young woman moving to New York, trying to find mm -hmm. my way in the film industry. They're gonna treat me like shit for like a couple of years, and then, mm -hmm. then I make it in the end. But of course, there's probably some love story as well intertwined <laughs> in all of it. But it's just yeah, it's just like we should just leave it behind, and we can create great content but still be healthy. Yeah. A lot of creative people also tend to be night owls, so they like working, you know, during the night because, you know, everything links, looks so much more beautiful during the night and you get all these great ideas. But unfortunately, that can collide with your biological rhythm, you know. Our bodies are created in a way that we should sleep at night and we should work during daytime. But, you know, in the filmmaking business, 
a shoot might take place in the middle of the night, you know, and you have to be there and, and be creative and, and work. So you want to be like, create something new, you have a limited budget, but all these things combined basically turn you into a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is very interesting uh, because obviously uh, these things are stressful, but most people can actually tackle them. Um, and, you know, but why do we still see uh, that the, that mental health issues are more prevalent among creative people. Uh, and I think part of the explanation is that it's not only that it's stressful to be in the filmmaking business, maybe uh, creative work attracts people that are more vulnerable uh, to uh, mental health problems. Because, you know, creativity at the end of the day is about divergent thinking. It's about seeing things that maybe other people don't see and connect to them uh, and create something out of that. So you have to be very open-minded, you have to be very sensitive in order to, to do that, I think. And so if you are very open-minded and very sensitive to let in these kind of impressions, you're also vulnerable to letting in other impressions. Mm -hmm. uh, so you are, I think, a lot of people working with creative work are very sensitive people toward um, feelings and emotions. Uh, so while it's a good thing uh, for them in their work, it can also make them more vulnerable for mental health issues, I think. Don't you think that's also maybe because uh, people who feel a lot of pain also maybe have a need to like share yeah share their pain or exactly. share what that's they've experienced input. yeah that's a good input because before i started film school and i wanted to do directing i asked myself but anders i haven't been through too much pain i have a good life I, i've been lucky can i become a director and also i also think that uh, what you said is really important uh, that a lot of people uh, artists or creative people uh, they they use their art as a therapy to mm. get you know like an outlet for their pain and their sorrow but you know what happens when that doesn't help because uh, making art isn't necessarily a, a therapy for depression an important message for me at least here should be that you don't have to sacrifice yourself you sacrifice your well-being for your art if you are struggling with mental health issues, if you feel depressed, if, you, if you're feeling anxiety, and especially if you feel like, you know, is life worth living at all, if you're down that road, please seek help. Because uh, there we, have, we can offer a lot of good help uh, to people with uh, mental health issues. I'm not saying that we can save everyone, but uh, a lot of people can get really better by getting the proper help. So mm. seek help, talk to someone. Mm. Yeah. Um, it might be a, a little bit sad, but I usually think that, hey, Matthias, you're you're not special, you know, like, and I I'm, I'm I'm okay with that, because people want to make uh, things with small budgets and they dream about like making it big and, mm. but that's not that's gonna only happen for like a tiny amount of people. Mm. So I think it's it's important to be calm about not being yeah. special. Yeah. You just said my worst nightmare. Yeah, I, yeah I'm like, oh no, don't say that. It's, I need, like, I, 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 I would not do it unless I felt like I had like a special viewpoint. Like I see the world through my eyes. No one else is like me. Yeah. That's why I make films. Yeah. But that's true. No one, yeah. no one is like you. But yeah, no, I get yeah. what you're saying. It's, mm. it's like a reality check, right? Yeah. So it's just like, oh, it hurts. You know, some people have goals like I want to get awards and become famous in Hollywood. Mm. And and uh, but what is your really your goal? And I think like if you really think about it, it's having a good life, like and finding peace in a way. But and success also. It uh, comes down to a lot of luck as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have some questions from uh, the patrons, which are supporting the channel. And that's, as I say to them all the time, it's really motivating to see people supporting the channel. So we have Patreon and also YouTube members. You can press link, uh, join below. There we have a lot of exclusive uh, content and you can ask questions and we can include it in the videos and such. So, Tib Fox, I would like to know something about methods to break out of the pressure to create. 
especially since we are always surrounded by social media. I think I've gotten quite good at just, if I go into like Instagram and I see maybe like friends or people I've worked with uh, and they do, and they're out shooting, doing something really cool and it looks, uh, at least it looks cool. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I'm just sitting at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I usually just log off. I've gotten quite good at just yeah. recognizing that, okay, so this is, mm. I'm going down a bad path right now. Mm. So I just need to just quit because I do cool stuff too. Yeah. Just just not right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then, then I'm just thinking about myself, like when mm. I post something, mm. how does that affect the, the people watching? Uh, so we're a part of the system that mm. makes it worse for everyone else as well. Mm. Ah. Yeah, that's true. It makes <laughs> yeah. sense, yeah. How to get away from the pressure of creating. Mm. I think just you have to realize that there are actually other things to do, other things to life than to create content. Uh, and, uh, and actually sometimes you can find inspiration in doing mundane things like, you know, cleaning the, the fireplace or the chimney even. Maybe you, you could find some inspiration of making a yeah, video, yeah, a film about definitely. that. Yeah. Yeah. But how can you make films about life if you never experience life? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. so you do need That's those true. like times off mm -hmm. and just to like explore life and yeah, yeah, yeah. just observe. Yeah. Psy says, how hedge against the perfectionism when you're never happy with the result you have and can't stop making adjustments? I actually made a video about that on my channel. Oh, yeah. I can link to that. Is it in English? No, unfortunately, Norwegian. it's in Norwegian. Okay. Uh, but my point was that, you know, uh, and that's a famous saying, getting done is better than perfect. Hmm. Uh, because if you never finish something, if you never complete it, you will not be able to judge uh, what was good about it and what was bad about it and how you can improve uh, for your next, next task. So uh, I think it's... Uh, I at least follow uh, the mantra that getting something done, uh, I prefer that to it being perfect and maybe being delayed or never done. Mm. Great, I think we are uh, done. Thank you so much for coming to the studio and talking about this. Uh, so you have a YouTube channel, so people check out the channel. It's, it's in Norwegian. It's in Norwegian. Yeah. <laughs> so if you are in Norway, if you understand Norwegian, Danish or Swedish, you can check out the uh, Wasim channel. And Matthias, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. And Fredis, I wish you a lot of luck in filmmaking industry and let's uh, work together so we don't get crazy. <laughs> and um, regarding working together, we also have a film workshop next year. And that's working together with people and learning from each other is really good for your health and, and the mental health because then you, you feel like a part of something. And next year in May, we have still have three spots left for the Annex Film Workshop. So check out the link in the description or you can go to index.com and maybe we'll join and I'll see you next May. So check it out and yep, yeah, see you again soon. Hello. <laughs>